friends, it is a most exciting day here on my channel for we will be doing what many considered impossible. They said it couldn't be done. They said I was crazy to even suggest it. But here we are, flying the Archangel Mark II SSDO to Elu. You saw the prototype ship flying to the Mun, and from that mission I found out ways in which it could be improved, both in subtle visual ways, like I got rid of that fat goiter at the front, and also I improved the actual ease of use as well. I added some more SAS wheels, toned down the amount of battery use, and I changed up the solar panels. But here we are ascending, so we just stayed at sea level till we got to 400 meters per second with the rapiers before gradually pitching up to a steady uh, climb before flattening out at 10 kilometers and building up our speed to around 1450 meters per second which thanks to the uh, increased heat tolerance uh, some update brought, I don't know which one, there go the nuclear engines by the way, we can now fly with nary a sign of any temperature gauges and there we go firing up the closed cycle mode of the rapiers we want to get our apoapsis pretty high up because we're going to be doing our circularization with the nuclear engine and there we go an apoapsis of 85 kilometers which will be more than enough to circularize and we can just deploy the solar panels when we're ready and pump our fuel into the central tank so that the delta, re delta v readout at the top right hand corner of the altitude gauge um, will show our, our true delta v so we're sitting here at 5170 meters per second of delta v now i know what you're thinking matt you blithering blundering buffoon that's nowhere near enough delta v to get to elu and you are right according to my trusty delta v map you would ideally need a rocket of around 8500 meters per second of delta v to get a ship from Kerbin orbit to Elu surface and then back to Kerbin again if you're doing it kind of the brute force method. And so with that being the case we are approximately 3,500 meters per second of Delta V shy of what we need. Therefore to complete this mission we'll be using the infinite fuel cheat. No I'm, I'm joking I'm joking. In fact what we'll actually be using are a thing called gravity assists. A gravity assist is the act of getting close to a large gravitational body like a planet or moon in order to accelerate. By by swinging through the sphere of influence of a planet or moon, we'll steal a tiny amount of its orbital energy, accelerating us forward for zero fuel expenditure. What this means for Kerbal Space Program is that if you have enough Delta V in LKO to get an encounter with EVE, then you can theoretically get to any planet in the system just by linking gravity assists together. In this particular video, the first stage of our mission will be to encounter EVE, which seems counterproductive because it's in the exact opposite direction to ELU, but we'll be using it to get a gravity slingshot to Turbine, which we will then use to swing us all the way up to Joule, which from there we can capture into orbit using Tylo's gravity and wait for a suitable transfer window to Elu. We will then perform our second Tylo assist to throw ourselves away from the green planet and on a direct course to Elu itself. Our biggest burns of course will be circularizing and landing on Elu, which obviously can't be done using any gravity slingshots. I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but uh, in the description and in the last 20 seconds of the video, uh, there is a link to take you to a more traditional style uh, commentary-less video, which is just like a music video. It's like three minutes long, like a too long didn't watch because this video is quite long because I wanted to document all the burns and maneuver nodes. So that one is a more um, concise and abridged version of this mission if you, uh, if you are like me and have YouTube ADHD which is a real condition I'm, I'm pretty I'm like like I'm like like 10% sure but yes that video is not monetized so I mean it's not you know I'm not like it's not going to benefit me one way or the other if you watch it or not but it will unfortunately be showing up in your sub boxes probably Wednesday because that's just what happens when you uh, de-unlist videos anyway we're getting our encounter with Eve I kind of skipped through most of the uh, maneuver node planning because at the end of the day I just make the maneuver node and keep playing around with it to like get an outcome that I like and as you can see we're gonna get our orbit to pretty much Juna's level um, which is fine I guess for a start but then we're gonna be doing most of our actual gravity boosting for one of a better term uh, using Kerbin itself so as again as you can see here we're just playing around with maneuver nodes till we get a desirable uh, encounter with Kerbin and then we can just get our periapsis to try and hug quite close to the planet uh, obviously the closer you are to periapsis or closer to the planet I guess uh, the more effective or the more impact the gravity assist has and as you can see it's uh, well it's, it's gone be pretty good so in order for that to work we have to adjust our encounter with Eve slightly and then we can go ahead and well do our Eve encounter and then we'll just do the maneuver node to get you know to get that orbit from Kerbin uh, once we've done the Eve encounter because sometimes KSB will just not particularly accurate until you're actually in the orbit that you're going to be doing the maneuver on 
So, there we are. We've cleared Eve and we have our orbit nice and raised. We can go ahead and make that maneuver node. So, in reality, this took a, a long, a quite a while to get the maneuver node fine-tuned to be absolutely perfect. You can see I'm still sort of slightly playing around with it. If you use the mod precise node, then it does get a bit easier, but I'm deliberately not using transfer window, window plan, planner or a precise node because I want to try and get this stop. Although those two mods are installed, as you can see from the right-hand column, I, I didn't use them. So, I guess you just have to take my word for it. But uh, we'll kind of cross that bridge when we get there. So here we are just getting our encounters with Kerbin. The maneuver node wasn't really that accurate. So just by burning uh, radial out, um, we can raise our periapsis to above 70 kilometers. Because obviously we don't want to be hitting Kerbin's atmosphere because that will slow us down, which is uh, not what we want. And then we can just zoom out and check the map screen. And beautiful. It's beautiful. So we can just get our Kerbin encounter there. It's just a little bit overzealous with the time acceleration there, but... Uh, I don't think it ended up being too harmful for us. And there's our final orbit. Well, um, not our final final orbit, but just, you get what I mean. So we are just leaving Kerbin, and then we can plan our final encounter. So yeah, it's pretty easy to get Kerbin encounters once you've got an orbit like this. So again, just playing around with the moon over, we can just skip through that. To this point here, so we're just getting our periapsis nice and close to Kerbin once again. You want your periapsis to be in front of Kerbin's orbit, and there we go. Perfect encounter to Jewel. Didn't actually plan it to go that perfectly actually, but there you go. Sometimes the Kraken is on your side. Like I say, it didn't take a great deal of skill to do these kind of missions, although it can seem quite intimidating. It's all about patience. If you just have patience and are happy to just play around with new nodes, or maybe even just use mods that will probably do a lot of this for you. And then we go. We're going to do two small burns there. In fact, we overshot a little bit there. What I actually have is um, I toggled the nuclear engine, so I would just activate one of the six, and uh, I turned its thrust limiter right down. So we can do nice and precise maneuvers. And there we go. We have our dual encounter. So we can encounter it there. We'll have to fine tune that so we can use uh, Tylo to get captured in Jules' orbit. There we are, just quick saving. And there we go, we can accelerate through. So we're going to loop around the top, then shoot back all the way down, get our encounter with Kerbin, and that's going to boost us back up. There we go, we'll just skip through a lot of that. And now we can go ahead and make a maneuver node. So we can't really get a dual boost to Elu. I mean, you could if you planned the mission. Uh, well, um, I did not do this, so we can't. <laughs> Um, but for me, I couldn't really get an encounter with Elu. You can see me sort of trying to brute force it, but uh, I quickly realised it wasn't going to work. So what I did instead was used Tylo's gravity to capture me into Jules' orbit for basically free. And then we can just sit around in Jules' orbit and wait for a suitable Elu transfer window to occur. As I said earlier, at this point, we could then just slingshot ourselves there directly using Tylo's gravity for very little Delta V use. Here we are, just adjusting our inclination. I had to do quite a few maneuver nodes to get my uh, Tylo encounter perfect. You can see an Elu encounter there. Ignore that, I was just playing around with maneuver nodes. Uh, to get that encounter would cost me like 1,500 Delta V, which we do have, but it wouldn't. There you go, you can see how that maneuver node is hopeless. So we're not actually using that encounter. Ignore that. Don't worry. Oh, I don't know why I'm even drawing attention to this. <laughs> my, look how inept I am. <laughs> So again, just playing around with maneuver nodes until we get a suitable Tylo encounter, because obviously whilst gravity assists can increase the height of your orbit, they can also slow you down as well, and in the case of Joule, you could use Lath or Tylo to actually get into a stable orbit around Joule for well, basically nothing, because you're just using Tylo or Lath's gravity to catch you there. Tylo tends to be a bit easier, so uh, Tylo is the preferable one if you can. And there we are, and actually we haven't really matched up our maneuver node very much, but this is actually a good thing because our apoapsis is pointing forwards along Jules' orbit, which is the most ideal situation for what we're trying to do. And then we can time accelerate it to Jules and wait for our window to open. The way I got the window to appear was just by spamming time warp for long periods of time, then making a maneuver node. Oh, we're not getting an even counter yet. Let's just spam time warp again until we get through it. So. Uh, this is uh, obviously not the correct way of doing it, but it's just the easiest and less hassle hassly way of doing it. So there we go. Anyway, getting our encounter with Tylo. The way you get gravity assists working, if your periapsis is in front of the planet or moon's orbit, um, then that will boost you. If it's behind the planet, that will decelerate you. Anyway, I can't show you the footage of me waiting for the maneuver node because this is what the footage looked like. 
Nvidia Shadowplay at its finest. I haven't I haven't modified this footage at all, but yeah, so I couldn't show you that. But luckily, it sort of started working as the window opened. I think because I started filming, I got the maneuver node. And I was like, oh cool, the window. And then I went to bed. So I guess just, and then came back to it the next day. So maybe just turn my computer on and off, off and on again. Fixed the problem, as, the, uh, as a great man once said. So yeah, we can just spam tab to get our focus right. Uh, and then we're going to just play around with our elo. Now this took a long time to get that fine tune. You can see me just getting the closest approach there tweaked, basically by scrolling in one notch increments on the scroll wheel on the maneuver no planner there. But as you can see, like 15 meters per second give or take is not very much expenditure at all and then we can see we're actually getting our encounter there so we can just zoom in a bit and get our periaps in now obviously to get it sort of our periaps this needs to be as close to elu surface as possible but that's a maneuver node too precise for ksp's quite clunky maneuver node planner so we'll just do a deep space uh, course correction which is going to be a tiny tiny amount of fuel anyway so i'm not too bothered about not doing it using Tylo alone, but there we are getting our burn sorted out, and then we can just focus on Elu and see our encounter appear. So as you see, oh, but yeah, very quick. Elu's sphere of influence is basically nothing. It's about the same as the Mun in terms of actual gravity and sphere of influence. As you can imagine, especially when you're dealing with orbits as vast as Elu and Jules, it's quite difficult to get an encounter. But doesn't matter, we got it. And then we're just going to do our Tylo boost here and kick ourselves away from the green planet. Not for the final time, though. We will be coming back to get back to Kerbin. But uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, won't we? <laughs> so now it's just a case of doing our correction burn and time accelerating through to the encounter. Now, just backpedaling to when I made my initial Kerbin ascent, some of you may have wondered, Matt, you rock and roller rocket smith, why do you still have over 700 remaining units of oxidizer, which could have been used to help during your Kerbin ascent? Well, I'm glad you asked, random viewer. As you may have either assumed or noticed or witnessed firsthand if you downloaded the craft file from the description, this thing has abysmal thrust to weight ratio. This is due to both the enormous dry mass of the thing coupled with the nuclear engines that power it, which, while there are six of them, still don't provide much in the way of oomph. Now, this is fine for orbital manoeuvres, but when it comes to landing and taking off from other planets and moons that don't have an atmosphere, they leave a lot to be decided. That's why, for larger SSTOs, I like to leave a small amount of oxidizer in the fuel tank so that we can use the the rapiers to give us a small little extra kick when performing landings and takeoffs. So here we are arriving at Elu. As mentioned before, circularizing our orbit and performing our actual landing constitute the two biggest burns of the mission, following our initial Kerbin ascent that is. We begin with a short capture burn and thanks to Elu's tiny mass it doesn't take very much fuel at all to bring our apoapsis down to roughly the same height as our periapsis once our initial capture is done. Interesting looking planet in it, it's kind of like that dirty snowball appearance I believe Scott Manley once said, and uh, I definitely see where he's coming from there. Anyway, I begin burning at an apoapsis of approximately 35 kilometers. any lower than this and we wouldn't really be able to slow ourselves down fast enough before smashing into the ground. I mean, yes I could technically continually balance the spacecraft to keep my descent speed versus horizontal speed in check and perform a degree of the horizontal deceleration using the wheels and brakes of the craft, but that's both very difficult to say that as someone who's never actually tried it, and uh, well, I guess it just doesn't feel that realistic. So by golly, we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. We're also playing with Comnet activated, and doing a normal suicide burns means that we can just hold down the hold retrograde autopilot setting, since this thing is technically a giant drone. The ship will hold this vector with or without connection to Kerbin. Either way, it didn't really end up mattering too much. Um, we managed to land okay. I didn't get it calculated quite right because I didn't use a calculation tool or any mod for the suicide burn, hence I actually had to burn most of our oxidizer we saved from the Kerbin ascent to decelerate on the landing. But we've got we, we don't need very much to get off Elu because it really doesn't take much fuel to leave the surface of. So we can just go on our EVA and plant our flag. That's right, this video was sponsored by LootCrate.com! Get a discount! 10% off LootCrate.com slash Matt! Look at all these happy customers! Buy 50! Buy 100! Buy... lots! Oh, <coughs> Okay, right, that was the sponsor bit out of the way. If you want a Loot Crate, you know where to go. So here we are on Elu. Um, now, I'm pretty proud of this because um, I've managed to do this in an age where nobody sends SSTOs to Elu. Literally nobody ever has ever- wait, hang on. What is that? What the hell is that? Wait, you got Bill Kerman? Do you- are you guys- what is- right, we'll have to go investigate this. I'm- I- 
I'm really confused right now, actually. What on earth? Is that a- is this an easter egg? Is this an easter egg I've discovered? I see a- I see a speck! Is that a- That looks like a space speck. Wait. Is that- Wait, Brad, is that you? Oh, oh, hey Matt, what's up? What are you doing here, man? Oh, not much, just uh, flying an SSTO to Elu. R mate, that's what I'm doing! I think well, you hold on, you can't be doing that, because that's what I'm doing. Mate, I think I had the idea first, mate. <laughs> I, I don't think that's even remotely possible. This, uh, well, this planet is big enough for both of us. You better, uh, you better get well, out of here. Um, I might. Do you mind if I just take yours for a quick spin? Actually, it looks I, cool. I, I would actually mind, like quite a lot. I it's fine. It's fine. I'm just gonna. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, hold on. Oh, hold on. Oh, hang on. Uh, that's not. Uh, uh, oh that's my not gosh. gonna. That's not gonna polish out, mate. That's, well, uh, um, well, if you excuse me, I have someone's mission to go sabotage. Uh, no, uh, there can only be one. There can only be one. <laughs> And it's not you! Let's go! Quick! Run away! Run away! Run away! Okay. I don't think he knew it was me. So I think we're all good. Anyway, if that's not a cue to move swiftly on, I don't know what is. So we can just go ahead and get off this ice rock. So we're going to fire up our nuclear engines. Then just as the space plane starts to get into the air, we're going to kick off on the oxidizer. We don't have very much left, thanks to my shocking attempt at landing. But we, 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 we've done all right. So ideally, you'd be pitching forward about 90 degrees head on, uh, just because that's the direction that the planet spins. And then you can get the most uh, delta V save. But honestly, I didn't really care all that much we we have more than enough delta v to get home so i, I was i wasn't i wasn't too bothered about getting it perfect we're actually going into a rather inclined orbit but this this won't actually affect us too much so yeah circularizing only takes 28.1 meters per second because well as highlighted several times earlier elu is a tiny tiny planet it doesn't take much fuel in fact i overshot the maneuver node there but you know nbd nbd now, most people uh, feel that in this sort of situation, it's getting to the planet that's the most difficult part of the mission and landing on it. Uh, and these people are correct, but getting back to Kerbin is still quite difficult given that we only have, give or take, 1500 meters per second of delta V. So, you know, we wouldn't be able to just brute force it because, okay, we could get an encounter with Kerbin on engines alone. We wouldn't be able to circularize. We'd be coming in way too fast to air brake. So we're going to be doing quite a few maneuver nodes to force our orbit down. First of all, we're going to be returning to our old friend, Tylo, which, um, you know, really is the gift that keeps on giving when it comes to gravity assists. Um, but yes, we can do our burn 233 meters per second. So again, this is one of the larger burns. After this, we're not going to be doing many more burns. Certainly no burns that exceed 100 meters per second of delta V. So we're all good. So I'm going to just fine tune. I think, again, Kerbal Space Program stock maneuver nodes aren't really the most accurate things in the world. So I ended up having to do another deep space maneuver just to force our, um, our periapsis to the right place around Tyler. And I think we probably have to do some manual tweaking as well just by using the normal anti-normal Radial in, radial out, all that good stuff. There we are. But uh, I think in the end I just made another maneuver node actually, so ignore all that. But here we are just bringing our periapsis all the way down to Kerbin level just by using Tylo and Jules gravity. So this is kind of a double gravity assist really, Jules and Tylo. And that will send us flying towards Kerbin. But as I said earlier, we'll be coming in way too fast to uh, land at the moment. So we're going to be doing another gravity assist, but this time we're going to be using Kerbin. And this gravity assist, like the one before, is not the kind of gravity assist we've been doing uh, thus far, which is building speed and raising our orbit. We're going to be using it to slow ourselves down by giving some of our orbital speed to Kerbin, which for Kerbin is a completely insignificant amount given the vast, incomprehensible difference in mass between our spacecraft and the planet. And it's the same gravity assist as well, like even NASA doesn't take into account the orbital energy you're stealing from a planet given just how tiny space probes are compared to planets. Anyway, we're going to be getting our Kerbin encounter just by doing a fine maneuver node here, which actually gets us uh, into an accidental dual encounter. So I guess this does technically count to our tally of gravity assists, although it really doesn't impact the mission very much. But um, it's a gravity assist nonetheless, so I will take it uh, in the little tally. But uh, there we are. So we're going to have to do a bit more fine tuning, but I thought I'd just do this after encountering Jewel because sometimes Kerbal Space Program doesn't really uh, calculate stuff very well when you're not in the actual orbit that you're modifying. So, you know, whatever, we're just doing it here, burning radial in, radial out. Really have got to be fine tuning with the thing, and there we go, getting our, well, getting our orbit nice and down so we can go ahead and initiate that burn when we get to the encounter, and you see very quickly 
forces it right the way down. And this is going to be a really nice improvement. Oh, we're going to be coming in at a much slower speed. Not for this moment, but the next time we encounter Kerbin, we'll be going much, much slower. It still won't be slow enough to capture, but it's a start. So you saw me making maneuver nodes there earlier. The plan was that I would do a burn at Kerbin Periapsis, which is the most efficient place to burn at any planet. Uh, and that would all get us set up for our second Kerbin encounter straight away. Unfortunately, it didn't work. So we, we wasted 25 meters per second of Delta V there. It's not, it's not a big deal. We've still got 1,089 meters per second. I don't know how well you guys can see that value at the top. If you've got this set to 1080p, you should be able to read it. No problem, right? I have no idea if YouTube will make this unreadable. But anyway... We make it up our second uh, maneuver node there. We've probably just fast forward some of this because it's essentially just me playing around with the things until I can get uh, an encounter with Kerbin. And I overshot there, but it didn't matter. So we should be very fine tuning with it. And there we go. We want to make sure our periapsis is at a safe height, uh, but we can actually put it slightly in the atmosphere just so we can help slow ourselves down with both a combination of gravity braking and air braking as well. Not that air braking will have really any significant impact, but you know, it still looks cool, so I'm, that's good enough for me. So obviously at the moment our periapsis is, well, it's within Kerbin surface. We're going to burn out a few times, radio out. We're going to be going for, we're going to be aiming for 60,000 meters, just because any lower than that, we're going to be far too, th in, far too deep into the atmosphere for the speed we're going at. Look, we're going at practically 4,500 meters per second on atmospheric entry, which is low. Look at the flames at 61,000 meters. So yeah, any lower, we would have exploded. So unfortunately, we can't enter yet, but at least we've let off a little bit of speed in the atmosphere. Not a great deal though, as I said. So we're going to make another encounter, and this time we are our orbit is pretty much very similar in size to Kerbin's orbit, basically. So we're going to go ahead and play around with the Numa nodes and get our encounter there. And a good way to get a good feel for whether or not you're going to be able to air brake or not is just by pulling a Numa node in and making that circularization burn. We're not going to do it, we're going to do it with air braking, but you can see it's not going to take a great deal of delta V to circularize, which means that our incoming speed to Kerbin won't be that high. So with about 700 meters per second of circularization, we could do it on engines because we have 797 meters per second of delta V left, but we'd be pushing it fine a bit. So here we are, here we are initiating my trademark spin. Uh, this is to dissipate the heat evenly across the ship so no one part gets overexposed and therefore explodes. We could do a similar sort of thing again, but here we are nice and captured at Kerbin or safe. So we can deploy those control services now. And in fact, are we going to raise our periapsis slightly now because if we keep at that low we're just going to get captured in so we want to be fine tuning this so we're going to be keeping prograde but occasionally just skewing our course to kind of have a bit more control over how fast we air brake and there we go we managed to get our apoapsis to 71 kilometers which is of course uh but one kilometer shy of the atmosphere so now we're going to do another burn this time to get our landing correctly it's just practice uh, getting the landing right with the Kerbal Space Center. I used to struggle at first. These days, I generally can guess it first time. Um, it, like I say, it just comes down to practice and doing it a lot. So as you can see, I can see the mountains ahead. So I realize I'm coming in uh, way too slowly. So I start trying to do all these fancy maneuvers to try and slow myself right down. And I overshot a tiny bit, but like I say, a tiny bit. So we can easily make it. So we're just going to nosedive. We probably won't be able to glide this distance, but luckily we still have 2,500 near enough um, units of liquid fuel. More than enough for the ultra-efficient air-breathing rapiers and whiplash jets, so no worries there. So we can just fly towards the runway. And, well, that pretty much wraps this adventure up, doesn't it? So uh, any any and all questions, leave, um, leave them down below. And as I said earlier, I highly recommend watching the music video version of this. I was very proud of it. Uh, and like I say, I don't make money from it, so there's no, I don't have any monetary gain to make uh, from you watching it, so, you know, I, I don't know if that means anything. And of course, uh, harking back to that uh, completely unscripted and impromptu moment on ELU with that other SSTO, that was Bradley Wistance, and we just happened to make ELU SSTOs in the same week without even realising it, and I kind of, he just sent me a message and was like, oh, I'm making an ELO SSTO, and I was like, no way, dude, that's what I'm doing. And so we just collaborated. But there we are. Videos on screen. Brad's is there in the bottom right. Mine are um, the other. The others are mine. And that, well, that's the end of this commentary. So I'm just going to sign off there. <laughs>